Okay, let's start. start. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Sorry, sorry, yeah? sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Opa, let me read this to you. I has been notified that Calisponge Vaginalis has changed its actual name to a new one, Calisponge Aculeata. Therefore, the title of this presentation starts to make no sense. Mm. But wait a minute, wait, let me fix this. I put this notification right here. Let me make a few clicks to here, here. Uh -huh. Yeah, let me rewind this a little bit and play. Thanks to all of you for attending this talk. After this small incident, let's start. A few years ago, the term animal forest was published. The idea was made an analogy between the marine animals and the rainforest. This idea transformed these marine animals, like corals, bivalves, and sponges, into an habitat formers. Sponges are the first animal on Earth in form this type of aggregation. Also, some authors name it like living islands due to the large number of associated animals that live in these sponges. Not only has food source, but also has refuge and a substratum to survive. This sponge characteristic leads us to the question, will the theories that have been formulated from true islands also apply to these sponges or in other words, Will there be a species area relationship between the reef sponges and the associated fauna? To answer this question, we select a sponge that meet the following characteristic that was abundant on the reef, that has a good number of species associated, and that was easy to collect. The selected sponges was Calispongia aquelata. This sponge was abundant in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea coral reefs. It has two dominant morphotypes what elongated tubular and the other one basiform tubular. It currently has a record of at least 34 sponge drilling species. To collect this sponge, we travel to Cayo Arcas, a reef system located in the southern Gulf of Mexico. A total of 28 sponges of different size and shape was collected at nine sample points. After the sponge collected, the associated fauna was separated, and with the help of the expert taxonomist, each associated organism was identified at the lowest possible taxonomical level. To calculate the morphological values and test the species area hypothesis, a photogrammetric technique was performed to digitalize each sponge. This method consists in taking a set of photographs from different points of view to obtain the greatest amount of information from an object. This process generates a digital mesh that was based on a cloud point that was extracted from each photo. The first thing to do was take a set of 360 photographs to generate two cloud points. The first one is likely dense cloud to mark the key points in each photo, and the second one a much dense cloud necessary to generate the digital mesh that warps all the points together. Once the digital mesh was generated, each model was cleaned of unwanted reconstructed objects. To ensure capturing enough information to reconstruct each sponge, three sponges view were taken. First from the top side, the second from the middle side, and the third from the bottom side. With this procedure, we ensure to have plenty overlap between each photo and have sufficient information.
from HPU to reconstruct the sponge. Once the model were ready, it was possible to calculate the total volume, the surface, the sponge volume, the area and the number of tools of each sponge. Finally, with all those values, a complexity index was generated to summarize all those values and test whether the area or complexity is the variable that is most correlated with the sponge dwelling species richness. It registered a total of 20 associated species, some alpha eats, amphipodes, some brittle stars, and one pycnogonic species. However, not all the collected sponges have the same associated fauna and also did not have the same specific richness. When we correlate the species richness with the different morphological values, we observe that indeed the area or the volume are two factors that influence the number of the species that each sponge has. However, the complexity was the factor that has the higher correlation with the species richness. Those results are indicating to us that the diversity of the sponge dwelling species are increasing as the complexity increases. Also, the species area relationship are being fulfilled. That hypothesis results in an oversimplification of a more complex process that is represented with the sponge heterogeneity. This factor is a main characteristic that regulates the potential that has each sponge with interact with more or fewer species guests. With all this information, a second hypothesis test arises. When we considering the sponges as a receptor and a source of the species, the distance between each sponge could be a factor that influences the similarity on the species assembly that each sponge has. In this sense, we expect that the species richness increase as the distance between each sponge decreases in each site, and the species richness decrease as the distance between each sponge increases. To test this hypothesis, we measure the density of sponges in each sample point and use the density as a proxy of the distance between sponges. We observe that the sites that have a higher density of sponges are also sites that present a greater diversity of sponge dwelling fauna. In this graphic, each green circle represents a sample point, and the size of the circle represents the sponge density. If we look closely, inside the circles we annotate the species richness. With this graph, we try to represent how the sponge dwelling fauna species richness augment with the augmentation of the sponge density. In small circles, we register the species richness between 4 to 6, and in the biggest circles, we have an S value between 9 and 14. But then, what scale is the one who explained the observed change? Are the sponge distance or the sponge heterogeneity? To answer this question, we carry out a permanova test. We design a nested model between sponge density and sponge complexity. We found that both scales are significant and explain part of the variation in the model, in one place the sponge complexity and in the other place the sponge density. Therefore, the observed species richness were regulated in one hand by the heterogeneity of each sponge and in the other hand by the distance between the sponges that exist in each sample point. And that's it. I can only acknowledge to all the people that has involved in the species identification and also to the institution that made this work possible and especially especially thanks to all of you for attending this video.